Hi guys, welcome to another class in the ADA course. Today we're going to be talking about data types. Before diving into data types, I'd like to show you the difference between structured data and unstructured data. So let's talk a little bit about it. Okay, so by definition, structured data is the data that conforms to a data model has a well-defined structure and also follows a consistent order and can be easily accessed by a person or a computer program. So the most common way that a structure data is disposable is by a matrix. There is a data structure that organizes information using columns and rows. And in the real world, we have a few examples of matrix that, that are scientists or data analysts use a lot. And we have the most common thing is the Excel spreadsheet. But for those of you who have already learned Python and use the data structure called data frame, you can see that it is very similar to a matrix and also organized data in columns and rows so here we have a example of a spreadsheet right so you can see that the data is there is a data set that contain purchase of a store is organized in four variables or four columns called custom id product name price and quantity and each of these columns contains a value and a row is just a set of these values and we can also call that as an observation so uh, we can see that the this spreadsheet contains five observations right five rows and five rows each row represents a piece of information in this data set okay so that's about structured data but in contrast we have unstructured data right that is the the type of data the the information is not disposable uh, in a predefined data model and it's not organized in a manner that a human or a computer program can easily read. So this kind of data is the most common data in the real world. When you guys you guys probably gonna work in the data industry, right? So you you see with the future the the data that the you are going to use in your projects or in, in your work are not going to be most of them in an organized manner and you need to treat this using i don't know maybe some etl processing jobs or some kind of, of process jobs that can translate the raw data to a organized format and then you would feed it to the into a data warehouse so the most common types of structure data that we have is of course images and it's very popular right now because of the ai generated images right but we also have social media data we have emails we have data that is extracted from sensors so what is this kind of data imagine that you are uh, I don't know, maybe a company that has a lot of sensors to measure the quality of the air or the humidity. So this kind of data is obtained by the sensors and captured by some services and probably going to end up in a JSON format. And after we have the JSON, you can use to organize it and fill into a data warehouse if you want it to initiate the process of working 
with it and to do some analysis and descriptive statistics or even building a machine learning model into this data but we also have video files audio file text files so people from from nlp may recognize this as well i worked a lot of nlp so i use a lot of text files and documents in my my research my works and it is also a kind of raw data that we need to spend a lot of time into the the process of digging the data and and process it to obtain information in an organized way okay so returning to the class of today what is data types so data types is basically the format of the data is represented in, in organized data structures and we have basically two to three types of data types and it is the numerical data type the categorical and the, the binary that is a, a kind of categorical data for the they assume is only two two values inside the numerical data type we have a continuous and discrete type of data and let's dive in into each one of these categories so we can see which kind of representation each data type assumes in our data sets So here we have the numerical data types for continuous data and this type of, of data can, can take any value in a given interval. So um, as you may remember from your class on, on discrete math, the, a value between, um, between two decimal values we can assume we can take on any values on a set of infinite values so possibility of extracting any values between an interval uh, should be sufficient reason to to consider data as a continuous numerical data type so imagine we have i don't know an interval going from 1.5 and 2.5 can we agree that we can take on any values between those two intervals so i don't know maybe we can assume a value for i don't know maybe 1.75 or i don't know maybe 2.3 through 64 7 and that goes on and on so we can take on any value and in our example in the spreadsheet that i showed you showed you in the beginning of this lesson we have the the price columns that contains this the the information of numerical data types in the format of decimals so you can assume any value between an interval and an interval here is basically the mean price right of a product that we have in our store and the maximum price of the data we have in our store so what is the most expensive product and the less expensive pro pro product and we can, we can extract any value between those two intervals and because of that we can call the columns the we can say that is a continuous continuous numerical data type right
moving forward, we have also the numerical data types for discrete data and what differentiates the discrete from the continuous is the discrete data can take only integer values such as count so you cannot take any value between a uh, values from an interval so in the example that we are using here in this class we have the quantity column right so let me just highlight this for you guys and we can see that these columns represent the quantity of products that a customer has purchased in the, into the store and as you can see uh, for example for the first observation the the guy bought a laptop for this price and the quantity of laptop that he has bought is only one so he ha we have a count here so one is an integer right and because of that we can say the characterized by a column that contains discrete data values we also have the categorical data types and that is not the same as the numerical data type right so for the categorical data types the data can take only a specific set of values okay and representing a set of possible categories so for example in this example we are using for this spreadsheet we have the column product name that contains the name of all the products that have been bought in our store okay and probably we have a list of all the product names for all the products that we have in our store and as you can see um this type of data is not an interior so we cannot call the a discrete data type and can take any value between a data interval so we have a finite possible categories right and we may choose one between all of them and because of that we can call this column the product name to be a column that assumes that the data that contain that is contained in this product this column is a categorical data type because it is assuming a value so a predefined value there is the name of the product uh, from a specific set of values there is the name of all products that we have in our store okay We also have the binary data types and this type of data is pretty much the same as the categorical data type but the difference is that you can assume it's only binary values so we have an example here of the woman think if she's gonna perform an actual or not so we have these two two values there a, a variable a, or a column can assume yes or no this is a, a kind of binary data type we also have a boolean right when we, we want to call uh, that is a variable may be true or false so it is a binary data type also okay so that's all for this class guys i'll see you the next one